That's not how the force works. Hey everyone and welcome to the latest episode of Wiltshire Wishes. I'm again here with my friend Josh who's come back a bit later. <laughs> <laughs> On the same day. <laughs> okay, so Josh, so what are we here to talk about today? So we're going to go through the five best ways to make the prequel trilogy better. Uh, and we haven't discussed this. We're not, we're not like yeah. talking about this. We're talking about this right now. So we're creating the yeah, list. Yeah, we're creating the list. already going through one. So now why just let's get out there. The prequels aren't that good. The prequels are enjoyable. And yeah. I say that they're, they're the childhood Star Wars films, for us anyway. There's enough, so I, I loved them, them as a kid. Yeah. I remember coming out of Attack of the Clones and screaming, that's the best Star Wars film I've ever seen. I, I still love them. Like, You're going through them so you know, good. They, they are great, but... There are so many points so many, to improve. Yeah, definitely, okay? And I think we can agree the first point to improve would be kill Jar Jar Binks. Oh, yeah, okay. get, get rid of him. Okay, we get rid of there's Jar Jar Binks. There's, there's no problem with having some sort of comedy relief in a film. Definitely but not. See, three PO does quite well at that. Yeah, and for the chart, a, a recent film I thought the comedy relief was perfect was the new Planet of the Apes film. Definitely with, with, with Bad, Bad Ape. Ape. Bad yeah. Ape. Definitely. Uh, like he was like he was funny and it was like just enough. I'm okay. Just if, if, Jar Jar Binks too like, much. if Jar Jar Binks was like that, it would have been brilliant. And I think Jar Jar Binks was actually originally going to be this wise traveller. That's what the original script Which said. would make him much more interesting. A wise traveller who travelled the galaxy, you know. The fact that it, there is a joke on the internet, if you've ever seen the Darth and Droids role-playing game, where they basically take the Star Wars cl uh, clips and put, like, if it was actually a role-play game, and it basically makes up the fact that it was a six-year-old girl who designed Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> oh, you know what would be cool? Have big eyes and a tongue that shoots, <laughs> shoots out, you know. Oh, it's so stupid. It is. Okay. It, there's nothing wrong with the comedy relief, but nothing it's wrong. just done so badly in this case. Jar Jar Binks should not be in it. No. Or if we do a Jar Jar Binks, he should be a completely sort of separate character. I, mean, I don't mind the Gun Guns in a way. The, no, gun the, guns. the Gun Guns themselves are good characters. They're good like characters. The, the warrior it's tribe underwater. They've got very interesting species, and they're like warrior culture. But, uh, but him and Jar Jar Binks and Boss Nasser are unbelievably bad. But like the 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 fucking scene where he's like shaking his head and spits coming everywhere. Yeah. It's too much. It's too, too much. much. Definitely. So we've agreed. One of the things you must do is no Jar Jar Binks. Revise the comedy relief. Yeah. Now what what else could we do to improve the prequels? Well, we talked about it in the last video. Darth Maul. Darth Maul has to stay in the prequels. Definitely. His death his death in episode one is way too premature. Are you saying so he should die in episode three or maybe die in episode two? I think keep him to, keep him to episode three. Maybe he could die at the beginning of episode three episode the same way Count Dooku does. Beginning of episode three. And that could that could like lead into the evolution of Anakin into Darth Maul. I Vader. think what you have to do though, if you do keep Darth Maul around, is create a rivalry between him and Obi Wan. Yes. Definitely yeah. have him have Darth Maul still kill Qui Gon Jinn. Yeah, but Obi -Wan maybe can have the vendetta again. Obi Wan so. maybe becomes personal. I think it? Obi Wan also needs to have done something to Darth Maul. Maybe he does slice him in half and he gets robotic legs, or takes an arm and he gets robotic arm. Something like yeah. that. That like Darth Maul's like, I must kill Obi Wan. You know? it, then you can see a sort of interesting progression for Obi Wan where he starts playing with like sort of like darker side feelings of like revenge against Darth Maul for killing his master. Not that everyone needs it, because he's like he's the best character in the prequels already. Yeah, he is one of the main redeeming qualities of oh, the prequels. Completely. Yeah. But I think the the relationship between Darth Maul and Obi Wan could evolve in a really interesting way. Definitely. As, so, as, it, as it does in Clone Wars, but again, as it does in Clone Wars, but not time. as good as it could have on on screen. Exactly. And imagine if he had stayed throughout Episode Two and Three, we could have seen seen him all the way through Clone Wars. Yeah. Rather than just yeah, in yeah. a one series, he could have replaced Asa Adventurers. Who Definitely, is. and that's the issue with bringing in Count Dooku. As much as we love Christopher Lee, yeah. great actor, you know, rest in peace. But Count Dooku as a character is not just not interesting. He's not interesting. There was definitely some interesting qualities. Things like he was a Jedi. He was one of the lost twenty. But it's it's a struggle to see Count Dooku's motivations. Behind behind what he does, whereas with Darth Maul, you could see sort of his tortured past, like like the you know, he, he was he was trained from a you know baby basically. Yeah, yeah. He was found from the Daphne warrior tribe, as we found out in Clone Wars. Wars, and brought up as a Sith, as a killing machine. Yeah. You know, we could see that torment in Darth Maul. Have you seen the Darth Maul mini film, Darth Maul Apprentice? Definitely, yeah, yeah. where he kills all those Jedi. Yeah, that's such a great fan film. And how come a fan film can do? Darth Maul Justice live action yeah. better than episode one and George Lucas the creator of Star Wars. Yeah, exactly. Okay. 
Okay, so we so we've got two points. So we've got the first one is Jar Jar Binks has to be revised yeah. and no not be the main comedy relief character, okay? okay. And not be a pure child product toy line. And, and then Darth Maul has And Darth Maul stay. has to stay to at least the beginning of episode three. That's what I think, yeah. And another thing that would definitely improve the prequels is aging Anakin up. Oh uh, yeah. In episode one he was this nine year old boy and it was quite creepy him and Padme Amidal. Okay? Yeah. No, it was no, weird. It was the, weird wasn't it's it? the best line in Weird Al Yankovic's song, you know. You see him hitting on the queen, though he's just nine and she's fourteen, yeah he's probably gonna marry her. Five year age she, gap she, isn't that much, but when you're nine and she's fourteen, and it she, is. She doesn't look fourteen in that film. Does no, she? she doesn't. Okay, there's nothing wrong with seeing the origins of a great villain. Okay, because Darth Vader is probably one of the best villains oh, in the yeah. in the movie world. But Anakin Skywalker's character arc through one through three just doesn't do Darth Vader justice. Definitely, and those people do have problems with going to do an origin story because it takes away the mystery of a character. Yeah, and. There are some characters I don't want to see the mystery. Darth Vader think I would like to see what happened. And I, we did. But showing him as a whiny nine-year-old boy sad leaving his mummy... That moves into a whiny teenager. Teenager boy. who then kills all the Tusken Raiders. Well, no, I, no, I, I, I don't mind the Tusken Raiders bit. I love that bit because you can see the darkness. But I, I, I even think the whiny nine-year-old boy... Because like, any nine-year-old kid would be yeah, but upset about the We don't his need to see... That from Darth Vader. No, like, I think it makes it very interesting, like the trepidation of him leaving. Yeah, the, the trepidation. The, 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 Jedi, the Jedi don't accommodate that when he arrives there. Yeah, the but Jedi don't give him any sort of support. But or what anything. I mean is, he shouldn't have been. They didn't need to create a nine. They didn't. No. Need, he didn't need to be nine. They did that to get the children audience in. But then, okay, but, and but we, we were suckers because we saw this when we were kids. Yeah, we loved it, and now we have come to realise it's not as good. But what you do see is that, because you mentioned the Tusken Raiders already. You see Anakin leave Shmi, obviously, and he, but the main thing he's worried about is her safety. And he's been worried about that the entire time. He thinks, if I leave to be a Jedi, what will happen to my mum? And then when he comes back to Tatooine and finds her, obviously, like, tied up as a prisoner in the Tusken Raiders, all those fears and all that hatred has been, like, it's completely justified. Definitely, yeah, that's all justified. Yeah. But I think if we'd seen that more from a, you know, a Ford, you know, just because as much as I feel sorry for Jake Lloyd as an actor, mm -hmm. okay, he did not deserve the hatred no. Star Wars fans gave him. He just wasn't the best actor for the film. He needed they needed someone who could do a lot more with the role. Okay, they originally were going to cast Leonardo DiCaprio, DiCaprio. Oh. and there were so many others around that time who could have definitely done a justice to the role. Well, and yes, they wanted unknown, but I think just aging them up, making the storyline a bit less creepy between Padme Amidala and Anakin, and then the line in Revenge of the Sith where it says Obi Wan Obi Wan Kenobi says. You were like a brother to me. Was he really? Because you're ten years apart, basically. Yeah. Like, like talking actors, yeah. like episode two and three, Hayden Christensen. I think he's like the the per perfect for the Anakin role, but he just doesn't. I think the direction that obviously he's received has just is is faster and more intense. Justice, yeah. Where he's been so much better. So, like, I think if he had had a director who could actually who could direct nothing against George Lucas, George Lucas created Star Wars. Yeah. But he's even said it himself, he's not yeah, a director. Yeah, not, not a director. Okay, if they'd had someone who could do the character focus for Hayden Christian, really get inside him, you know, Ryan Johnson, who's doing episode eight, a character director. Uh, well, I've, I've said this to you before. In episode seven, Kylo Ren, the way he seems genuinely tormented and generally torn between these ideals, I think that's how Anakin should have been represented in episode two and three, like with genuine emotion instead of just some... Like creepy weirdo Jedi. Okay, so you're saying he doesn't have necessarily have been aged up. We just need to generally feel for him, generally see a yeah, tormented... Just, some, just a better character development. Better character, for because him. all we saw was a guy, a whiny guy who complained about Sam being coarse. Yeah, exactly. Okay? Which is, to be fair, a great line. It is a great line. We all love that <laughs> line, okay? Yeah, exactly. So, our, f our third point would be either age Anakin up and make him less whiny and more tormented and you see the light and dark side more than just a whiny, exactly. traumatised yeah. teenager. We've got gone over that point. Now, another one I think we've, talk, we've talked about is... We've, we've mentioned it before. We've mentioned it before is older one. Yeah. So The just, biggest issue is if you were watching this in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Because everyone saw 4 first yeah. when they were kids. Apart from us, we probably saw 1, 2, 3. Yeah. 
you see Old One blow up and you're meant to feel something and you do in a way because it's Princess Day's home planet and everything. And you see Princess Day's reaction. Reaction and you obviously know it means something. But imagine the gut punch you would get if we'd actually fallen in love with Older On throughout episode one, two and three and then see it blown up in four. So replace Naboo with Older On. Yes. So replacing Naboo with Older On, we get we recognise the planet immediately, you fall in love with Older On, the beauty, the characters, and you start thinking, I know Bell Organa, I know oh he died exactly, on yeah. that planet, not rather than just a supporting character. Was it like it was like the the actual like art design of Naboo as well. It's like it's very iconic with the architecture stuff. But in this few shots you see of Alderaan with like the towers of like glistening white, it's just just as iconic as Naboo is. Yeah, definitely. And they could easily have just combined the two and just no Naboo, just have Alderaan. Okay. Yeah. See, you can even you can even still include like the, the sort of primitive, primitive native species people, you know, that that's, they can rely on. Yeah, that's good. You know, it shows that humans aren't the only weren't actually native to the planet yeah. to begin with. Yeah. And just by having older on, it would just make it, I think, more streamlined as well, and not have yeah. so many. As much as I love seeing new planets, it just you wouldn't have to know. Okay, that Naboo, that's older on, that's familiar. Well, with, with the whole new planets thing, um, in like the beginning, the opening, opening sequence of Rogue One, where they like swap from planet to planet to planet, and I just think there's so many other planets they could have used, as you said in Rogue One, that we'd known. And by just streamlining it, keeping it to older on, it confuses the less hardcore fans. So now that's our next point. So change Naboo to older on. Yeah. So another thing that could definitely improve the prequels is the politics. Now yeah. I don't mind politics. I think showing the fall from the Republic to the Empire, showing the democracy, the failing democracy, is fine. You're right, and some of it is actually very interesting. Interesting. But I think the funniest thing, the early, my earliest memory of Phantom Menace is me watching it one early morning and my brother had just watched it the night before and he came in and started fast forwarding through all the Senate scenes. <laughs> and I was like, what are you doing? He was like, these bits are boring, you don't need to watch these. And I'm like, no, I want to watch it, it's Star Wars. But now I understand why he did that. Yeah. Okay? You know, Mr. Speaker, Mr. You know, all that. Like trade delegations. Trade delegations, delegations you know. You, we don't right. mind some of that. I do love some political intrigue. But make it interesting, okay? Yeah. Don't make the most interesting part of that scene is the cameo from the ET aliens. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's th things like like Jar Jar bringing up the vote of no confidence and you know yeah. this gets too much. It definitely does. You know, having actually someone maybe you know Bail Organa. We saw him. We I mean, saw Bail Organa such an under like an under underused character. character. And Mon Mothma. Yeah. Mon Mothma, who was in Return of the Jedi, now and Rogue now One. Rogue One. Yeah. And she was in the, in the deleted scene in Revenge of the Sith, who was the same actress who played her in Rogue One. Yeah, I've, she's another good character. Another good character. Seeing more of the characters that we recognise from the Rebel Alliance and the yeah, se and the see how they sequel trilogy were working in the Republic and why they felt believed so much in the Republic yeah. that they would join the Rebel well, Alliance. What they're fighting for, in what four, they're five, fighting six. for, and what we saw they were fighting more for from Episode One was more corruption. Yeah, Dude, that was what we saw. And so you, you didn't see any of that. You just saw the fall into this. Empirical uh, design. Yeah, we didn't see any of the, like the resistance against this. The resistance happening. against it. Yeah, that's definitely. We did see a bit, you know, with um, Padme Amidala and Barrel Gunner in that but, one oh, scene, saying, just, you know, this, this is, is how, how democracy, democracy dies. dies with a round of applause. Yeah. Okay. But, but that's it. That's the only resistance you teach. Yeah. And it's just someone talking about it, as opposed to getting people like Mon Mothma and Barrel Gunner working against uh, Palpatine. Palpatine trying, to, demo trying to restore democracy way, yeah. and working with Jedi. But I just think if they cut those scenes, not all the scenes, but cut them down. It would have kept the flow going, mm -hmm. not made it stand still, and it would have made it just a bit more interesting, you know? Yeah, definitely. And have a proper political element in it, not just we see a senatorial chamber with these great floating platforms, yeah. you know? And some amazing aliens in there, but it was just a bit boring and a bit too long and yeah. a bit too slow, and you're like trying to understand what the hell is going on. Yeah, well, they, they, they focus too much on like the sort of the Vote for technical no jargon and the stuff, technical and not jargon. Like, the interesting intrigue and like. Political backstabbing. Yeah. Why is the Republic so important? Yeah. No one focused on that. All we focused no. on were trade delegations, trade blockades. The, the technical jargon. The technical People, jargon. Just a lot of speak mm -hmm. that no one really understands. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's what, it's that's called Star reason. Wars for a reason. It's yeah. not called Star Politics. Okay? Sorry. <laughs> Revised is, politics. Revise the politics. Make it more interesting. Yeah. Make it... Make the uh, scene smaller and don't have someone going Mr. Speaker. So we've talked about our five points. We had... 
Jar Jar. Revising the comedy relief. Revising yeah. comedy relief, exactly. Then we had Anakin. Again, just needs to be completely revised. You know, a lot more character development and potentially we, aging him up. Potentially aging him up and maybe changing the actor. You know, yeah. but as we said, Hayley Christian still could have worked. Yeah. And then we had Darth Maul, okay? Probably the best character from the prequels. Right, it was the top of our list for the most top of underrated characters in Star Wars. Definitely. So underrated. Have him throughout yeah. to at least the beginning of episode three. And then our next one was Naboo. Yeah, Forget change, it. Change it to Alderaan. If you want, mention the boo again in another thing. But, but have the main planet be Alderaan. Yeah, because you just you gain that attachment to Alderaan. You actually feel something when it just gets destroyed in episode four. Definitely. And then, finally, it is politics. Yeah. Okay. Have change it, it up. A, sorry. Change it up. Ch- yes. Change it so it's less boring, less technical jargon. Yeah. And make it interesting and show why the rebellion was so desperate to get the new republic yeah. started. Bring back the people we know and just see their yeah. struggle. See Mon Mothma, Admiral Akbar, Admiral Radis, see all those characters. Yeah. And make the, make the politics interesting. Perfect. So, as much as we do love the prequels, they have a special place in our hearts, you know, the worst, the our stuff, we can improve and those are the five things which I think they could have definitely yeah. been improved. So, what do you guys think? Do you absolutely hate the prequels? Do you just wish they'd never done the prequels? Do you think they, they're fine just being kept the way they are? Or do you think they should be improved? And what do you think should be improved about them? Let us know in the comments below. And thank you for watching. Make sure you hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe for more. And I've been your host, Jordan Wiltshire. And thank you, Josh, for joining me again. Oh, always a pleasure. Until next time, bye.